ట్వంటీ ఆగస్ట్ టూ థౌజండ్ ట్వంటీ వన్ ఫ్రైడే వెల్కమ్ టు ఇందు న్యూస్ అనాలిసిస్ బై శంకర్ ఐఏఎస్ అకాడమీ ద లిస్ట్ ఆఫ్ టాపిక్స్ ఇస్ డిస్ప్లేడ్ ఆన్ ద స్క్రీన్ వి హ్ వండర్ఫుల్ కలెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ టాపిక్స్ వి హవ్ టాపిక్ రిగార్డింగ్ స్మాగ్ వి హవ్ టాపిక్ రిగార్డింగ్ ఫౌండేషనల్ లర్నింగ్ వి హవ్ టాపిక్ రిగార్డింగ్ ఆబ్రహ్మ కార్డ్స్ వి హవ్ టాపిక్ రిగార్డింగ్ జెండర్ ఈక్వాలిటీ అండ్ వి హవ్ టాపిక్ రిగార్డింగ్ త్రీ డి ప్రింటింగ్ సో వండర్ఫుల్ కలెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ టాపిక్స్ లెట్ ఎస్ నాట్ వేస్ట్ ఎనీ మోర్ టైమ్ లెట్ ఎస్ బిగిన్ ఆర్ డిస్కషన్ now take a look at this article this article is regarding smog tower see according to this article delhi government is going to inaugurate its first smog tower so in this context let us discuss about smog smog towers and its uses very important topic from prelims as well as mains perspective the relevant syllabus is displayed on the screen interested aspirants can go through it first what is smog to be precise what is photochemical smog See as the term clearly indicates smog is a combination of smoke and fog these terms smoke and fog combine to create the word smog so we can define smog as a air pollution which is a mixture of smoke and fog that reduces visibility this is the common definition of smog then what is photochemical smog see photochemical smog is a smog which is produced when sunlight reacts with nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds this is the definition of photochemical smog sunlight nitrogen oxides volatile organic compounds they react to create a smog like situation this is photochemical smog let me explain this mechanism see nitrogen oxides come from car exhaust coal power plants and factory emissions so it is present in our atmosphere similar to nitrogen oxides volatile organic compounds are also released from gasoline paints and cleaning solvents so nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds are present in the atmosphere they react with sunlight chemical reaction takes place as a product of this chemical reaction ground level ozone and airborne particles are released let me repeat sunlight reacts with nitrogen oxide and volatile organic compounds present in the atmosphere it creates a chemical reaction in that chemical reaction ground level ozone and airborne particles are released the mechanism of photochemical fog is illustrated in the figure we can see motor vehicles power plants and industrial activities releasing nitrogen oxides and we can see volatile organic compounds being released by these products they both react in sunlight they create ground level ozone and fine particles see this ground level ozone and fine particles create a smoggy like situation it reduces visibility this is photochemical smog i hope aspirants can follow see ground level ozone is a dangerous product it is released during this chemical reaction ground level ozone can damage lung tissue it can cause respiratory illness like asthma it can also cause itchy and burning eyes okay so it is not good for human health see ozone present in the atmosphere is good ozone it protects us from uv rays we can see from this figure the sunlight is emitting uv rays and good ozone protects it whereas ground level ozone that is ozone which is present near the surface is bad for human health I hope aspirants can understand the difference. This ozone can affect our lungs, it can cause respiratory illness, it can affect our eyes. It can burn our eyes, it can cause itching sensation. So when sunlight reacts with nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds, it creates ground level ozone and airborne particles. The airborne particles and ground level ozone released by this chemical reaction creates a smog. It reduces visibility, it creates a smoky foggy situation. this is photochemical smog i hope the concept is clear see photochemical smog is harmful in many ways it is unhealthy to humans and animals it can kill plants it can also cause premature deaths so the consequences of photochemical smog are vast and dangerous it reduces visibility it is unhealthy to humans and animals it can kill plants and it can cause premature deaths now coming to the issue now let us take delhi See we all know that Delhi is suffering from severe air pollution. In recent times the air pollution in Delhi has increased many folds and it is affecting health of people and environment. We all know this. See this air pollution in Delhi is also causing photochemical smog. If you go to Delhi in winter time you can observe this photochemical smog. It will reduce the visibility, it will cause lot of harmful effects on humans, animals and plants. So because of the increasing air pollution and photochemical smog Supreme Court of India intervened it intervened and ordered the Delhi government to take several steps to mitigate air pollution we all know this so now Delhi government has taken one such step it has created its first smog tower 
Delhi government has installed its first smog tower. What is smog tower? See, smog towers are also called as anti-smog towers or smog-free towers. These are other names given to these towers. See, as the name clearly says, it is a tower. Tower is a large structure and it performs the function of air cleaning. To put it in simple words, it's a big air purifier. You would have seen air purifier in rooms, right? Imagine the same air purifier for a city. That is smog towers. It is a large-scale air cleaning system. It is a large-scale air purifier. Now let me explain how it functions. See the smoke tower as a huge structure. Inside the structure it has lot of filters and fans. Okay. Using the fans inside the tower, the smoke tower sucks in the polluted air. I hope aspirants can follow. This tower has lot of fans and using that fans, the smoke tower sucks in the polluted air. It sucks the polluted air from the top of the tower. Okay. So from the top of the tower, the polluted air enters into the tower. and it passes through the filter as i already said this tower has lot of air filters so the fan sucks in there and it passes the polluted air into the filters after passing through the various filters the air is cleaned and finally the clean air is released into the atmosphere from the bottom this is the functioning of the tower which is installed in delhi and this approach is called down draft approach since the air is sucked at the top and released at the bottom this approach is called down draft approach Let me repeat it. The tower using the fans sucks the polluted air from the top. Then it passes the air into the filters. After passing through the filters, the clean air is released at the bottom. This is the tower installed in Delhi. This approach is called down draft approach. Now let me talk about the filters installed in these towers. See the filters used in these towers are EPA filters. They use air ionization technology. See EPA stands for high efficiency particulate air filter HEPA high efficiency particulate air filter these kind of filters are used in the delhi tower as the name clearly says this filter is highly efficient it removes at least 99.97 percentage of dust pollen mold bacteria and airborne particles so it is highly efficient and this kind of filters are used in the delhi tower So the key words are anti smog towers, large scale air purifier, multiple layer of air filters, down draft approach, EPA filters, air ionization technology. Okay, these are the important key words regarding the Delhi towers. This tower will be 24 meter in height. Okay, it has lot of fans and air filters. So this is how Delhi smog tower functions. See, as I already said, Delhi tower use down draft approach. It sucks the polluted air from the top and releases the clean air at the bottom. There is also another approach. This is a additional information which I'm going to give. Similar to down draft approach, there is also up draft approach, where the polluted air is sucked from the bottom and clean air is released from the top. China uses these kind of towers. It uses up draft approach. Okay. The basic methodology is same. The entry and the exit is different. Okay. The up draft approach of China smog towers is displayed in this figure. We can see. We can see the polluted air getting sucked at the bottom, travels up the tower, it passes through the filter. and finally clean air exits to the top of the tower this is additional information interest aspirants can make note of it now coming to delhi tower see many experts are actually criticizing the idea of smog tower in delhi this is because smog tower are not efficient in cleaning outdoor airs because in outdoor air there will be lot of mixing there will be lot of air movements dust particles from nearby towns nearby states will come inside so the influence is maximum the outside influence is maximum So smog towers are least efficient when it comes to outdoor environment. They are efficient when cleaning indoor environment because in indoor environment you can control the air flow, you can make it less ventilated and you can increase the efficiency of air purification. Whereas outdoor it is not in your control. So many experts are actually criticizing the idea of smog tower in Delhi. This is because outside air environment cannot be controlled. The influences of air movements are maximum in outside environment. So Delhi smog tower has received some criticism from environmental experts. These are the important points regarding smog towers. Only with time we can say whether this idea is successful or it is just a waste of money. Let us hope it becomes successful and people of Delhi get some relief. With this we have come to the end of the discussion. In this discussion we saw about smog, we saw about photochemical smog, we saw about smog tower, the working of smog tower. we saw about down draft smog tower up draft smog tower and the criticism regarding smog tower very important topic from prelims as well as mains perspective please make use of it
now let us move on to the next discussion now take a look at this editorial this editorial is regarding foundational education so let us discuss the important points discussed in this editorial foundational education is an important topic from mains perspective let us begin this discussion now we have a question what is foundational education see from the name we can guess what is foundational education see foundational education is an education which is provided to the children at early stages of development the initial days of schooling why this education is important why foundational education is important see according to medical experts once we become an adult it becomes tough to learn things it is time consuming adults take more time to learn things it is also tough for adults to unlearn and relearn something once we are fixed in our ways it is tough to change this is why foundational education is very important otherwise education becomes difficult and time consuming this is what the author in this editorial stresses the importance of foundational education and according to the author of the editorial india should focus on its foundational education to achieve the overall development but there are a lot of problems india is facing lot of issues in the context of foundational learning let us discuss this major shortcomings one by one you can use it as value addition in your main answer the first major shortcoming see the first and foremost comes the issue of nutrition see according to medical experts children are expected to consume between 1000 to 3200 calories per day for overall development the number of calories varies based on their age and gender but the general number is children should consume between 1000 to 3200 calories per day but the problem is many children in india do not take this number of calories they are malnourished they are underfed for example take india's midday meal scheme india's midday meal scheme is poor in nutrition it does not satisfy these calorie requirements so because of this shortcoming children do not receive the required number of calories for overall development they struggle in education their brain development is slow compared to the children of other countries so this is the first major shortcoming issue of nutrition now let us move on to the next major shortcoming the issue of classroom instruction see as the name clearly says classroom instruction is the instruction which a student receives in the classroom from teacher in india most of the classroom instruction are based on textbooks we rely on rote learning we are relying on memorizing and also the curriculum in india is very ambitious it is heavy and overloaded so because of this outdated classroom instruction many students lack the competence to cope up with the classroom instruction they struggle to follow the instruction in the classroom to put it in simple words see the issue of classroom instruction was also highlighted by a report the name of the report is human development report of 2019 you can use this report as value addition in your mains answer according to this report many students in india are struggling to follow classroom instruction because of ambitious curriculum and overloading of textbooks okay this is the second major issue of classroom instruction now let us move on to the next issue see the next issue is regarding the automatic promotion in government schools see in many government schools students are automatically promoted to the next grade without testing their foundational skills this is a major problem without any testing of required foundational skills students are automatically promoted to the next grade so according to the author this is another reason why many people in india lack the foundational education so this is another major shortcoming automatic promotion to the next grade now let us discuss about the next issue see the next issue discussed by the author is about national education policy 2020 see according to the author the national education policy 2020 is also content heavy curriculum this is the keyword it is also ambitious it is also content heavy curriculum so we haven't learned anything from the past mistakes we are still doing the same mistakes of the past see why content heavy curriculum is a problem see if the syllabus is content heavy then there won't be much time to do constructive learning teacher will be hard pressed for time they can't do anything innovative their only aim will be to finish the syllabus not teach the students properly many of us have experienced this issue right we know teachers borrowing uh, pt periods games periods to finish the syllabus so this kind of mistake will keep on repeating 
So this is another major issue discussed by the author. National Education Policy 2020 Content AV Curriculum. See, if the syllabus is ambitious or the curriculum is content heavy, then the student's knowledge will be limited to the books. They will lack creative and practical skills. This is why syllabus should be more oriented towards innovative, creative and practical learning. Let me repeat the issues we have discussed so far. Issue of nutrition, issue of classroom instruction, issue of automatic promotion to the next grade and content heavy curriculum of national education policy 2020. Now let us move on to the next issue. See the next issue is regarding the skill level of teachers. See according to the author, our Indian education system lacks skilled teachers. Only if the teachers are skilled, then they can teach properly in the class. They can do some innovative, constructive and practical learning in the class. If the teacher itself lack the teaching skills, then how can we expect the students to progress? So, this is another major issue discussed by the author of this editorial. Lack of skills among Indian teachers. Now, let us move on to the next issue. See, the next issue is regarding the urban-rural divide. When we are talking about education in India, rural education is far worse than urban education. This is because rural areas lack adequate resources. They lack time and they lack personal support. Because of these issues, rural education is far worse than urban education. So these are the major shortcomings discussed by the author of the editorial. Let me repeat it one more time. Issue of nutrition, issue of classroom instruction, issue of automatic promotion, content heavy curriculum of national education policy 2020 and issue of lack of skill among Indian teachers, urban rural divide in Indian education. So these are the major issues discussed by this editorial. Now let us see the way forward. See, let me give you a trick. Whenever you are writing solution in the main answer, think about the problems. Then think the solutions for the problems. You will get many points. So we have already discussed about the major shortcomings. Discuss the solution for these major shortcomings. You will get the way forward. This is how you write your main answer. You will get points from 360 degree perspective. But since we are discussing about this editorial, the author of this editorial has discussed only few solutions. Let us see about it. The first solution is regarding mobilization of students in higher education. See, according to the author of the editorial, government through various schemes should mobilize students in higher education to educate the children and teachers in remote and underdeveloped areas. The author believes that this solution will bridge the urban and rural education divide. I hope aspirants can follow. Mobilization of students in higher education to educate children and teachers in remote and underdeveloped areas. Now moving on to the next solution. The next solution is regarding private companies. See according to the editorial, private companies should be made to sponsor mentorship programs. Through these mentorship programs, the private companies should send their employees a month on the field. They should move to the rural areas and underdeveloped areas and they should teach them. They should guide them. This is another solution given by the editorial private company sponsorship of mentorship programs. See the first solution is regarding mobilization of students in higher education. The second solution is regarding private companies. Now let us come to the most important point in this editorial. This point is about a report. See reports are great value addition to your main answer. So whenever you come across reports try to make a note of it. This report was published by Lego Foundation. This foundation is Denmark. See, we all know about Legos, right? The bricks, plastic bricks which you build houses, these are Legos. The headquarters of Lego is in Denmark. This company establishes a foundation for education. That foundation is called Lego Foundation. It has published a report. According to this report, students have better foundational learning if they have good peer interactions, good teachers, fun learning content and experimentation in knowledge. These are the key points. Peer interactions, good teachers, fun learning content and experimental knowledge. If education has all these qualities, then the students have better foundational learning. So according to the editorial, India should also try to implement these qualities in their education. This is why this point is very important. When you are writing your main answer, if you include a report to support these points, it will get more credibility. It will boost up your score. So make a note of this report. Report by Lego Foundation in Denmark. So with this we have come to the end of the discussion. 
In this discussion, we discussed about foundational learning. We discussed why foundation learning is very important. And we discussed about the problems in India with respect to foundational learning. And finally, we discussed about the way forward. In the way forward, we discussed about a report published by Lego Foundation in Denmark. These are the important points discussed in this article analysis. Now, let us move on to the next topic. Now, take a look at this editorial. See, as I already said, whenever you are reading an editorial, try to understand the context behind it. You know why that editorial has been written. Now, let us discuss the context behind this editorial. See, in the past few years, India is getting closer with Israel. The Israel-Indian relationship is getting stronger. For example, Indian Air Force Chief, Air Chief Marshal R.K. Baduria recently visited Israel. Also, Indian Air Force will visit Israel in October to take part in multilateral military exercise. So we can see both the countries are getting closer, their bonds are getting stronger. Now let us come to the topic discussed in this editorial. Abraham Accords deal. See, according to the author of the editorial, since India is getting closer to Israel, India should take advantage of the Abraham Accords deal. This is the gist of this editorial. We are getting closer to Israel, so we should take advantage of the Abraham Accords deal. By taking advantage of this accord, we'll get more access to West Asia. India's interest in West Asia will be satisfied by this accord. This is what the author is trying to convey in this editorial. So with this knowledge in mind, let us now discuss about Abraham Accords, its objectives and its significance. First, what is Abraham Accords? See, Abraham Accords is a peace agreement. It is a peace agreement signed between Israel, UAE and Bahrain. This is the most important point. This accord was mediated by USA. So let me repeat, Israel, UAE and Bahrain are the signatory of these agreements. This agreement was or this accord was mediated by USA. See, the Abraham Accords was signed at White House last year, September. That is September 2020. Donald Trump was the president of the US at the time. He mediated this accord. Now we have a question. Why this accord is so significant? Why it is very important? See, the Abraham Accord is the first Arab-Israeli peace deal signed in past 26 years. This is why this agreement is very important. See, as we already know, Israel is a predominantly Jewish country. Arab nations are predominantly Muslim countries. So there have been historical tensions between Israel and Arab nations. This is why this agreement is very important. It is the first Arab-Israeli peace deal in the past 26 years. So we can see Israel and Arab nations of UAE and Bahrain getting closer. They are cooperating. The tensions are going down. This is why this agreement is very important. The main objective of the agreement is to pursue a vision of peace, security and prosperity in the Middle East. See, Middle East and West Asia means the same region. India calls this region as West Asia in its foreign policy, whereas other countries call it Middle East. Okay? It consists of countries like Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, UAE, Iran, Iraq, that region. This region is very important. It occupies a strategic position. It is very important for India because a lot of important water bodies surrounds this region. And India also has a lot of citizens in this region. So the peace, security and prosperity in the Middle East or West Asia is important to India. And this Abraham Accord is a right step in this direction. Also, according to this agreement, UAE, Bahrain and Israel will work together in sectors like tourism, trade, healthcare and security. So this agreement can lead to the prosperity of Middle East. It can ensure peace, security and prosperity in Middle East or West Asia. See, there is another reason why this agreement is very important. Take Israel. As I already said, Israel is a predominantly Jewish country. But Israel has a lot of Islamic pilgrimage sites. Because of the historical tensions between the Israel and Arab nations, these sites were not given access to the Muslim population of the world. But with this accord, the Muslims around the world are given access to the historic sites in Israel. For example, take Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. It is the third holiest site in Islam. This site is located in Israel and it was not given access to the Muslims of the world because of the tensions between the Israel and Arab nations. But after this accord, this site has been granted access 
for the Muslims all around the world. So this is why this agreement is very important. It is bringing the countries of Israel and Arab nations of UAE and Bahrain closer. It is also de-escalating the tensions between Jews and Muslims. This can ensure peace, security and prosperity in the Middle East or West Asia, which is very important to India. I hope aspirants can follow this information. So far we have discussed about Abraham accounts, its objectives and significance. Now coming to India. Since we are studying for civil services exam, we have to approach everything from India's perspective. So coming to India, see in the past few decades, India is deepening its ties with West Asia or Middle East. As I already said, West Asia and Middle East means the same region. So in the past few decades, India has been growing its cooperation with the West Asian nations. We have been conducting a lot of naval exercises. For example, take Zayed Talwar. It was a naval exercise with UAE. It was conducted near the coast of Abu Dhabi. So this exercise increased our ties with West Asia. It en enhanced the relationship between India and UAE. We are getting closer and closer to West Asia. Let me explain this point with another deal. See, India signed an agreement with Oman. Okay, Oman is a country in West Asia. According to this agreement, India was given access to the facility of Dukam port. This port occupies a strategic position in Middle East and India was given access to this port. So we can see India is getting closer to the West Asia. It is increasing its ties with West Asia. The strategic and military cooperation between India and West Asia is developing at a fast pace. We are increasing our interest in West Asia. So this is why Abraham Accord is very important. See, previously when India was approaching West Asia, it has to approach Israel separately. It has to approach Arab nations separately because they had historic tensions. So we have to be conscious in our relationship. We have to get closer to Israel. We have to get closer to Arab nations. But at the same time, we should not antagonize any of the nations. It is like playing a chess game. You have to be careful. If you get closer to Israel, Arab nations will get pissed off. If you get closer to Arab nations, Israel will get pissed off. So we were playing like a chess game. We were conscious in pursuing relationship with West Asia. But after the signing of Abraham Accords, this obstacle has been removed. Since Israel and Arab nations are getting closer, India does not have to be conscious. It can have a common policy with West Asia. This is what the author is trying to convey. And according to the author, we should take full advantage of this accord. We should increase our tie with the nations of West Asia. But there is a problem. What are the problems? See, not all Arab states have accepted this agreement. This is the biggest problem. For example, take Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has maintained a distance from this agreement. Saudi Arabia is a key player in West Asia and it has maintained a distance from this agreement. This decision by Saudi Arabia may affect India's interest to a certain extent. It may create problem. Now moving on to the next big obstacle. Take Iran. Iran is another important key player in West Asia. India has a strong strategic cooperation with Iran. Even Iran has not agreed to the terms of Abraham Accords. It has not welcomed the agreement. So this is another major problem. See, both Saudi Arabia and Iran are important allies of India in West Asia. We import almost 80% of our annual oil requirements from Iran and Saudi Arabia. So they are our important ally and they have not agreed to this agreement. They have not accepted the Abraham Accords. So we have to be careful. According to the author, we have to take advantage of Abraham Accords. But at the same time, we have to balance the relationship between India and Saudi Arabia and India and Iran. And if possible, in future, we can pursue Saudi Arabia and Iran to join this accord. This is the way forward. I hope aspirants can follow. The main obstacles are Saudi Arabia and Iran. Since India has strong relationship with both Saudi Arabia and Iran and they have not agreed to the terms of Abraham Accords, we have to be careful in pursuing the Abraham Accords. We should take advantage of this opportunity. At the same time, we should be careful to maintain the strong relationship between Saudi Arabia and Iran. This is the gist of this editorial. So in this editorial, we have discussed about Abraham Accords, its objectives, its significance, why India should take advantage of the Abraham Accords and what are the obstacles in pursuing that goal. These are the important points we have discussed in this editorial. See, West Asia is an important strategic region of the world. India's economic growth depends on the peace, security and prosperity of West Asia. So we have to associate with West Asia. 
only by associating with west asia we can achieve the full potential of our country's growth by pursuing our interest in west asia we can also occupy an important place in the global order but we have to balance the intricate dynamics of this region for example we have to balance our relationship with saudi arabia and as well as iran so these are the important points mentioned in this editorial now let us move on to the next discussion now take a look at this article this article is regarding 3d printing technology see according to this article a uh, art valve was recently manufactured using 3d printing technology see art valve is a important organ in human body human beings have four art valves these art valves allow blood flow in only one direction and prevent backward flow of blood they form a important part of human art and this organ was manufactured using 3d printing technology according to this article experts have used specialized biopolymers to manufacture art valve using 3d printing these biopolymers are similar to human tissue and they were used to manufacture the valve these are the important points given in this article so in this context let us discuss some details about 3d printing now what is 3d printing see 3d printing is also known as additive manufacturing see additive manufacturing is a process of making an object by depositing material layer by layer so we can say 3d printers use layering method to create the desired object these printers work from the ground up and pile layer after layer until the object looks exactly like the desired product this is additive manufacturing let me explain this with an example imagine you want to manufacture a water bottle with 3d printing the 3d printer will start the manufacturing from the bottom first it will deposit the lower layer then it will go to the upper layer then it will go to another layer so from the bottom it will go up it will keep on depositing the material and finally it will come to the bottle cap this is additive manufacturing process see the usage of 3d printing for manufacturing is extremely advantageous this is because 3d printers are flexible they can print or manufacture any kind of objects rigid objects flexible objects strong industrial products any kind of objects can be printed using 3d printing to manufacture strong industrial products 3d printers use carbon fiber and metallic powders as raw material using this raw material 3d printing can manufacture strong industrial products when it comes to rigid objects 3d printers use plastics to manufacture them for example take sunglasses 3d printers can manufacture sunglasses using plastic as raw material again it will use layering method from the bottom it will keep on depositing the material until sunglasses formed when it comes to flexible objects 3d printers use hybrid rubber or plastic powder to manufacture flexible objects for example phone cases bike candles these kind of flexible objects can be manufactured using 3d printing so this is the technique behind 3d printing it use layering method and it is extremely flexible it can print or manufacture any kind of objects rigid flexible strong any kind of objects can be printed using or manufactured using 3d printing now moving on to the working of a 3d printer see as i already said 3d printing uses additive manufacturing technology it deposits material layer by layer this method was used in traditional inkjet printer also but the traditional printers printed the object in two dimension whereas 3d printers will manufacture object in three dimension this is the major difference the methodology and technique used behind the printers are the same the dimension differs in 2d in 3d that is a major difference the printer we use to print documents prints in two dimension whereas 3d printers manufactures the object in three dimension now coming to the components of 3d printers see 3d printers has three components software raw material and tools so the printing starts with the software in using this software we'll create a 3d blueprint of the object which we want to manufacture again we'll take water bottle in order to manufacture a water bottle first we'll create a 3d blueprint of this water bottle using this computer aided design software cad okay after creating the 3d blueprint we will prepare the printer we will fill the raw materials and after that we'll start the manufacturing once the manufacturing is started the precision tools will take the control it will build the desired object by depositing layer after layer this is the working of 3d printers software raw materials tools okay three components of 3d printers see the manufacturing using 3d printing is very advantageous 
This is because we can manufacture even complex shapes using 3D printing. Another important advantage is 3D printing is easy. It is simple and it is quick. And we also use less materials in manufacturing a product. This is why many industries and companies are now preferring 3D printing. They can print complex shapes. 3D printing is easy, simple and quick. They also use less materials compared to traditional manufacturing methods. So, so far we have discussed about 3D printing, the methodology behind 3D printing, how it works, advantages of 3D printing. Now let us move on to its applications. See, as I already said, 3D printing has got application in almost every industry. This is because 3D printing has great accuracy and speed. So it is used in almost all manufacturing sectors. Using 3D printing, many manufacturing sector produces finished products. In addition to producing finished products, they also use it to produce prototypes. See, prototyping is an important part of manufacturing process. What is a prototype? See, prototype is a preliminary version of a device. Creating a prototype is the first step in manufacturing. And 3D printing technology is used for rapid prototyping. You can create prototypes in a simple, quick, fast manner. See why prototyping is important. See, if you want to manufacture a water bottle, first you will manufacture the prototype, the preliminary version. After creating the prototype, you will show it to the management, you will show it to the experts, you will find the flaws, you will find the defects. Then you will recreate your design. This is why prototype is very important. Traditionally, creating a prototype will take a lot of time because we will use traditional manufacturing methods. Whereas in 3D printing technology, you can create a prototype in a quick, fast, efficient manner. Within seconds, you can create a prototype. Within seconds, you can make changes to the prototype. For example, if the bottle cap is defective, you can change the dimension in the software within seconds and you can manufacture another prototype. So this is why 3D printing is the future tool of the world. We can create rapid prototypes using 3D printing. So in manufacturing, it is used to create finished products and rapid prototypes. In aerospace and defense sector, 3D printing is used to create small parts and components. It is also used in prototyping in aerospace and defense sector. It is also used to create earring aids. So physically challenged, people can benefit from 3D printing technology. 3D printed models are also used in classrooms for learning. For example, if the teacher is teaching about solar system, you can create a solar system by 3D printing technology. You can enhance visual learning. So, in many Western countries, 3D printers are used in classroom learning. If they are teaching about some object or some planet, you can manufacture it using 3D printing. Now, even common consumers are using 3D printing to create small objects like ornaments, toys, etc. So, its potential is vast. So, these are the important points regarding 3D printing. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about 3D printing, the technology behind 3D printing, steps involved in 3D printing, advantages of 3D printing and the applications of 3D printing. Very important topic from prelims perspective. Please make use of it. See now let us take up this editorial for discussion. As I already said, when we are discussing editorial, we should know the context behind the editorial. Why the editorial has been written. Now let us discuss the context behind this editorial. See recently the judicial system of India has passed the interim order. Interim order means temporary order. This order was regarding National Defense Academy entrance exam. This exam is scheduled to be conducted on September 5th and our judicial system has passed an interim order regarding this exam. What is the order? See, before the interim order, women were not allowed to appear for this exam. They were not allowed to write National Defense Academy entrance exam. But with the passing of interim order, now women are allowed to appear for National Defense Academy entrance exam. So finally, women are given the equal opportunity to appear for this exam. This is the context behind this editorial. This editorial is written in this backdrop. I hope aspirants can follow. Now let us discuss some important points discussed in this editorial. See first, this editorial talks about an important case. The name of the case is Secretary of Ministry of Defense versus Babita Punia. This case was held on February 2020. See, this case is very important because as a result of this case, Supreme Court passed many landmark judgments. What are the landmark judgments? Let us see them one by one. First, the Supreme Court asked the government to grant permanent commission to women in the short service commission. See, short service commission means limited period career. For example, 10 years. Supreme Court asked the government to give permanent commission to women in short service commission. To put it in simple words, Supreme Court asked the government to give permanent job for women in short service commission. 
previously they weren't given permanent commission now because of the supreme court order government should give permanent commission okay i hope aspirants can follow in addition to this the supreme court of india asked the government to give command postings to women in all services other than combat this is a another important order passed by the supreme court of india because of this case permanent commission to women in the short service commission commanding postings to women in all services other than combat see these orders are very important because it establishes equality of women in armed forces this is why this case is seen as landmark judgment secretary of ministry of defense versus babita punia you can use it as value addition in your main answer see according to the author of the editorial irrespective of positive judgments like this there is still gender inequality in armed forces see previously women could join army through indian military academy and officers training academy only these two avenues were available for women to join indian army as i already said they were not allowed to write national defense academy entrance exam only by approaching the court and getting an interim order they are now able to write this exam they have another opportunity to enter indian army previously only two avenues were available now they have another avenue this example shows gender inequality still prevails in our armed forces they have to go to the court and still get their equal rights they have to fight for it it is not being given to them see women have been fighting a tough battle for equal opportunities in the indian army see women were inducted into indian army in 1992 and they have played a significant role in our army they have contributed very much in spite of those contributions and achievements they are not given equal opportunities in indian army as i already said they were not allowed to write the entrance exam so this kind of discrimination still prevails for women in indian army every time they have to go to the judicial system and get their rights see not giving equal opportunity to women in indian army is violate of many constitutional articles it violates many constitutional rights for example take article 14 15 16 and 19 these articles talk about equality it talks about equal opportunities at work so by denying them this opportunity by denying them this chance we are violating these articles we are violating their constitutional rights so it is unjustified So according to the author of the editorial we should take all necessary steps to establish gender equality in armed forces especially Indian army only by giving women equal opportunity we can achieve overall development see we are taking some steps in this direction for example take this independence day during this independence day a prime minister made an announcement according to that announcement girls will be granted admission in sainik schools so this is a welcome move it will prepare women for equal role and life in military so such kind of steps are welcome but more such initiatives are needed from government and armed forces this is the gist of this editorial so with this we have come to the end of the discussion now let us move on to practice prelims question practice prelims question now take a look at this question this question was asked in the year 2018 so it is a past question 3d printing as application in which of the following One preparation of confectionery items. Two manufacture of bionic ears. Three automotive industry. Four reconstructive surgeries. Five data processing technologies. Select the correct answer using the code given below. A one three and four only. B two three and five only. C one and four only. D one two three four and five. See as I already said, we can use three D printing to create a lot of complex objects. Now let us take first statement. preparation of confectionery items see confectionery item means chocolates and candies yes we can use 3d printing to create confectionery items for example there is a shop in united states of america it uses 3d printer to create customized candies to customers so it will have lot of models regarding the chocolates the customer can select the required model for the chocolate and they will use the 3d printer to create the chocolate so first statement is correct moving on to the second one manufacture of bionic ears this is also correct see a researcher named michael mccalfine has created bionic ear using 3d printing he printed artificial ear using 3d printer used specialized biopolymers and he created an artificial ear after creating the artificial ear using 3d printer he attached an antenna and he created a bionic ear so it is a combination of tissue and electronics and it was created using 3d printer 
the name of the researcher is Michael McAlphine. So, second is also correct. 3D printer can be used to create bionic ear. Moving on to the third statement, automotive industry. See, this is an easy statement. As I already said, it can create a lot of complex objects. So, in automotive industry, there are a lot of screws, bolts, steering wheels, seats, car seats, seat belt. So, all these products can be easily manufactured with 3D printing. So, this is an easy statement. Third statement is correct. Now, moving on to the fourth one, reconstructive surgeries. Yes, 3D printing as application in reconstructive surgeries. For example, if you are going for reconstructive surgery for your face, to put it in simple words, if you are going for plastic surgery for your face, the surgeon will create a 3D model of your skull. You will know the specification, you will know the required changes and after constructing the 3D model of the skull, you will perform the surgery. You will create a prototype of your skull, how to adjust it, how to make changes, then you will go for the reconstructive surgery. So, it has application in reconstructive surgery. So, fourth statement is also correct. Now, moving on to the Fifth statement, data processing technologies. Yes, 3D printing has application in data processing technologies. For example, take big data. We know in big data, there are huge volumes of data. Now, many experts are using 3D printers to visualize the huge volume of data in big data. They are infusing the big data and 3D printer and 3D printer creates a visual objects of the data presented in those technologies. So, 3D printer has application in data processing technologies. So, the answer is D, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 3D printer has application in all the following. It can create confectionery items, it can manufacture bionic ears, it is used in automotive industry, it is used in reconstructive surgeries, it is also used with data processing technologies. As I already said, technology in the news is very important from prelims perspective. So, when you come across some new technology in the newspaper, please make sure you learn about it. It has a high chance of being asked. 2018, there was a question about 3D printing. In 2020, there was a question regarding drone technology. So, technologies are pet areas of UPSC. Make sure you give priority to such areas. Now, moving on to mains question. See, today's mains question are displayed on the screen. Interested aspirants can write the answer and post in the comment section below. With this, we have come to the end of the news analysis. If you like the video, click like, post a comment below and subscribe to Shankar IS Academy channel. Thank you. Have a good day.